Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I'll teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about the synchronized keyword used with a static method. I'm going to open up my web browser to javacjava.com and select begin. Now I'm going to scroll all the way down here to uh, synchronized static methods. Okay, so the synchronized keyword can be applied to a method or a block of code. Now the primary purpose of the synchronized keyword is to lock a shared resource to a single thread. Now the technical term for locking a resource is called an intrinsic lock or a monitor lock. In this tutorial I will demonstrate populating an array list from multiple threads using the non-thread safe add method from the ArrayList class of course. Now this tutorial will demonstrate applying the synchronized keyword to a static method and a code block to make our method thread safe and therefore fix our issues. So I'll demonstrate the issues and then I'll show you a couple different ways of fixing it. Okay. All right, let's come down here to the code and highlight this and control C to copy or right click and select copy. Let's move our browser off screen. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop down here, but if you don't, you can create one really fast by right clicking, selecting new shortcut, CMD, next and finish. It's just that easy. Let's open that up and type in Java C, which is a Java compiler command. You should see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you receive an error message, go and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash, CD is short for change directory, backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory called Java using the MD command. I already have that folder, but if you don't, um, it'll go ahead and create it for you. Change directory is the Java folder. I'm going to make a directory here called uh, synchronized static. Okay, let's change directories to that folder. CD tab. I'm a notepad. Um, synchronized static.java. Okay, I think I got that all spelled out right. That looks good to me. All right. Go ahead and control V to paste that in there. Right click and select paste. Okay, let's come up here, let's save this. So I've got uh, basically three classes in here, right? Um, synchronized static, which has the main method entry point and it only does a few little things here. And then I've got this class called static list. Now static list, its primary thing is, is that it has this uh, encapsulated array list of integer type and it's static. And um, it's called number list here for the reference variable two methods here inside of this class. Add to list, which will just take a single integer number parameter here, and it'll invoke the add method of, of the array list class to go ahead and add that particular uh, parameter value to the number list array, right? Now, the add method is not thread safe, so we're going to see all kinds of strange issues come up with that there, right? And the other method that I've got in here is display list. Now display list will simply invoke the uh, print line method and um, display the, the current number list array. All right, so, oh wow, I pasted this in here twice, it's not good. All right, let's uh, save that. Okay, let's talk about the other class, number thread. Number thread is my um, class that's going to be basically all my my child threads there. Of course I implement runnable, implements runnable, and I've got this encapsulated number which is basically going to hold this class's state or this object state, thread object state to be specific there, an integer value. Now in the constructor here I'm just taking in a single parameter number and I'm setting uh, you know the the instance variable number equal to the parameter number value, fairly simple there, and then I'm invoking a, I'm creating a new thread class, right? object and I'm passing it this. Now since this class number thread implements runnable that makes it a runnable object. So we're invoking a constructor that takes a runnable and then I'm simply invoking the start method which in turn invokes the run method that I've overridden inside of this particular number read class. Now, if all that doesn't make sense you want to watch my tutorials on like introduction to multi-threading and then I've got four more in, uh, multi creating uh, thread tutorials too as well. So. But all this will be really simple after you after you watch those there. Okay, now I'm invoking static list add to list, which is this class up here, and the add to list, and I'm passing it over the number that we got in there, right? 
and then that's basically how it's building the array. Let's come back up here to the main method. I am looping through this for statement 100 times there, so we're building in the array list with the numbers 0 through 99 basically, and I'm invoking a new number thread, or creating a new number thread object every time and passing it the uh, you know, the current value of i, right? So should we it should get 0 through 99 in that list there, right? And these are all just going to be a bunch of um, bunch of child threads there. Then we'll display to the console active threads, and then plus just uh, invoke the you know the static active thread method, uh, active count method on the thread class there. And then I'm going to invoke the display list method. Now the display list will simply display number list, of course, to the console there. All right, so. This program is riddled with all kinds of problems, non-thread safe problems. So let's go ahead and come up here and save this and let's clear our screen and run it. Compile it and run it. Okay. All right, so right off the bat, active threads, that looks good. So we get null, null, right? And we got a null missing down here. So I can see the number two doesn't appear to be anywhere in here and I don't see the number three there, right? So on, when it invoked those threads, um, passing you know the number two and the number three, basically what happened is it tried to add those numbers to the list, right? Which comes up here and takes that number in and invokes the add method there. Now the array list add method is not thread safe, so there was problems. And those problems could be who knows what, uh, but as we can see there, we had so many threads, we had 100 child threads trying to add, invoke that add method with their number in there, that the, the ArrayList add method bombed out in a particular way there where you know we've got some nulls there too, right? So let's go ahead and just hit the up arrow to bring up that last statement, hit enter again, right? Oh, wow, look at this. We've got uh, a whole nother issue there. Let's hit the up arrow again. Let's hit the up arrow again and again and again and we just keep getting all of these these errors there like array index out of bounds exception 10 right and um <clears throat> that looks like it was trying to pass in maybe the number i'm not entirely sure six now 1633 who knows anyway but um you can see we've got all kinds of issues going on here so how do we ensure that this method can only be invoked by one thread at a time. Well, what we do is we, we simply come over here and we put in the um, synchronized keyword. You know what the synchronized keyword is? is that tells the Java virtual machine that add to list, right? When one thread is invoking add to list, we're gonna go ahead and place an intrinsic lock or a monitor lock on this particular method. Okay, so that'll ensure that that particular method is locked, which will then ensure, you know, that we can't, you know, invoke the add method from the ArrayList class until the lock is off. So let's say, for example, we have, <clears throat> oh, let's come up here to, let's just hit our up arrow one more time, right? Um, so it looks like 74, right? bombed out there it wasn't able to do it so after we apply synchronize what will happen is like for example in this particular case 73 the um the thread that was writing 73 had the add method locked well didn't have it locked right and so the other one 74 came along and something happened and it bombed out now by applying synchronize if 73 has this locked what will happen is when we run when we um, invoke this, and let's say for example we've got the uh, the thread that's right, trying to write 74 at this point in time. Instead of being in the runnable state, it'll be put into the blocking state. Now the blocking state will wait for the intrinsic lock or the monitor lock to to be done with, right? So in other words, 73 will get to add its number to the list, and by the time this has this statement is done executing, then the intrinsic lock that we have on add to list will then get removed and 74 can come down here and its state will change from blocking to runnable and it'll go ahead and execute its stuff here. All right, so let's come up here and save this. Let's clear our screen, let's recompile. And now we run it, look, hey, we have no nulls, right? Hey, that's great. We, um, you know, we've solved our add problem there, but we do, we do still have another problem and it'll show its ugly head here in a moment. 
especially if I start doing it really fast, right? Come on, there we go, got it. All right, so, um, you know, all of our numbers are getting put in there. We have our add method solved there. So now we get a new exception, concurrent modification exception, right? And basically that is on the display list method, right? Which is right here. So the static list display list method, which is just simply trying to display the number list to the console, okay? Well, consider this, think about this for a moment, right? Let's say for example, um, the we're, we're invoking the add to list and that's protected, right? So that will ensure that this finishes before another add to list can be, um, can be done there, right? Now display list comes in and says, oh, okay, I'm not checking for, since it's not marked synchronized, it's not even checking for any sort of intrinsic locks or anything like that. So it can go ahead and just poke its little rude face right in before this add method is has finished, you know, writing the last number to the array and actually, you know, rewrites the array and makes the, the new array list, you know, kind of all perfect, right? Finishes up its final touches per se, okay? So because this is not a synchronized method, it can poke its little ugly head in here and you can this concurrent modification exception, right? So it was still modifying the array list when we tried to basically display it to the console, right? And using the print line method here. So we can fix that by apply, by simply, really simple solution there. Synchronized, applying that to the display list thing as well, right? Because we know that, um, our main thread, well, hell, it's a whole nother thread itself. It's the main thread, we know that, but we also at some point had a hundred child threads working on that. And we, at this point near, here, need to ensure that when we do call invoke the display list method, that we need to check for an intrinsic lock, right? And because an intrinsic or monitor lock, whatever you want to call it, but synchronized will do that. All right, so let's come up here and save this. And let's clear our screen, let's recompile. <clears throat> and let's rerun this and rerun it rerun it rerun it rerun it and you know we can we can just do this a million times over and we are good right we're not going to get that particular error though oh, now i'm recompiling okay now we can get something unfortunately i hit the up arrow too many times i want to see if i can get that going again I wanted to get back up where we had the, uh, we had an empty array in there at one point in time, right? Okay, here, this is beautiful right here. Okay, <clears throat> now, um, here's where you have to really think about multi-threading. And what happened up here is we still had 22 active threads, right? And you can see we're missing quite a few numbers here after the number 79. Well, um, by putting in synchronized here, that only tells it, you know, hey, we can invoke this method as long as there isn't an intrinsic lock on, you know, anything really that has to do with anything that's gonna be modifying this number list array here, right? And so <clears throat> what we ended up with here, and this is why I put in active threads here, is that we still have 22 active child threads that were waiting to write their add method to the to the array, invoke the, you know, add to list method right here. When this came down here in display list and, you know, this moved along here and said, okay, I've got 22 child threads, multi-threading still running. Display list is, is um, you know, is still, well, hey, we invoke the display list, it's synchronized. We didn't end up with the error, we just ended up displaying the list before those active threads were all done, okay? so. You know, we can, uh, how do we solve that problem? Well, basically what we can do is we can just dis display, um, you know, uh, while, and we can just basically do while thread.active count is 
greater than one. That's all there is to it, right? And that will just simply loop there. And then we can display our list afterwards. And that'll always ensure that, you know, uh, active count one will be the main thread. Okay, so very simple solution to do that there. All right, now let's go ahead and come back up here and save this. Let's recompile. Oh. Let's clear our screen. Okay, you can see at this point in time there were 10 active threads, but we've got all the numbers, you know, not necessarily in any particular order, but we definitely have 99 and all these ones that would have finished out last there, right? So at this point in time, if if we hit the up arrow, we should always see at least the number 99 somewhere in the array list here, right? And you'll also notice that if you if you watch like a, if you pretend there's a vertical line going down here, we should always see it at the same distance there. So no matter how many times we invoke this thing now, right, we are all good. Oh, that was an interesting one here. Did you see the number 16, that child thread? This one, this one really had some trouble here, 101 active threads, but you can see this would have been a giant problem before and we probably would have crashed out or displayed almost next to nothing. But by doing that little while loop there, we were able to ensure that, um, you know, all the active, all of our child threads had continued before we actually called the display list, right? So anyway, that's um, kind of gets you introduced to the synchronized thing. I'm gonna go ahead and get this off screen and get that off screen. I'm gonna just leave you guys with uh, just a quick final thought. You know, in my next tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to apply the synchronized keyword to, inst to basically an instance methods instead of static methods. So anyway, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.